Hi, everyone. Today I'm going to be introducing you to three different types of art institutions, public galleries, commercial galleries, and artist-run centers. I'll be giving you a general description of each one to help you better understand how they operate and interact with each other. But be mindful that not everything can be so easily categorized in real life. Art institutions come in all shapes, sizes, and varieties, and what's true for most may not be true for all. Let's get started. Public galleries are nonprofit or public art institutions that feature curated collections of art. The art displayed here is meant to be appreciated by the general public, so it's not for sale. Examples of these institutions include the Art Gallery of Ontario, the National Gallery in Ottawa, and the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Montreal. Many of Canada's oldest and largest public galleries were established in the 19th to early 20th centuries. Early on, these collections were able to grow thanks to wealthy individuals who donated their private collections to the institution. To this day, public galleries continue adding to their collections by directly buying new artworks in addition to receiving them from donors. In truth, public galleries may not have existed without the generosity of these individuals, but it's also important to think about who has had the ability to collect and donate artworks and what impact does this have on a collection. A public gallery's collections can influence which artworks we are most familiar with, what we study in school, who we consider to be an artist, and much more. If these collections are actually for everyone, why do so many of us feel unrepresented by what's on their walls? Over time, many of these public galleries have amassed immense collections too big to display at any one time. This is why they feature permanent collections and temporary exhibitions of art. Displays of permanent collections are curated from an institution's collections and aren't usually changed too often. On the other hand, temporary exhibitions, which are changed a few times a year, allow galleries to ask questions and create new narratives through art more regularly. Exhibitions can be curated from the gallery's collections, collections borrowed from another institution, private collections, or any combination of the three. However, remember that not all institutions fit neatly into categories. While all of this may be true for most large-scale public galleries, smaller ones can operate somewhat differently. Many universities, including the University of Toronto and Ryerson University, have their own public galleries. These institutions serve as sites of ongoing research and offer students opportunities for hands-on learning experiences. Other public galleries, like the Power Plant and Koffler Gallery, regularly feature rotating temporary exhibitions due to their scale, as opposed to a combination of exhibitions and permanent collections. Koffler Gallery in particular doesn't fit the mold as a multidisciplinary cultural platform that looks beyond just visual arts. Its main institutional support comes from the Koffler Family Foundation, in addition to support from private donors, corporations, and government agencies. Unlike a public gallery, commercial galleries are for-profit and privately owned businesses that buy and sell contemporary artworks. This means that the art here can be bought, but be warned, it won't be cheap. Commercial galleries are looking to make the most money they can from selling the work they collect. As a result, they can be very selective when deciding what and who they choose to become part of their gallery. They're looking for artworks that will make them look good enough that customers will come back and tell their friends about it too. Commercial galleries are essential to the ecosystem of the art world. When a piece is sold and the gallery makes a profit, the artist is also paid. When more pieces are sold, an artist receives not only money, but attention in the world of art, which could lead to being collected in a public gallery. It's hard for an artist to make more art if they aren't paid to live and no one is collecting their work. Consequently, even though commercial galleries are the most difficult institutions to get into, they're the most important to be included in for any artist. This kind of gatekeeping has been a barrier for many artists to make a name for themselves in the art world. In June 2020, 
artist Ibrahim Abusita compiled a list of commercial galleries in Toronto to find out who was getting in past the gate. His research found that less than 39% represented women artists, less than 10% represented artists of color, less than 2.5% represented black artists, and less than half a percent represented indigenous artists. We know that being represented in commercial galleries is crucial to becoming an established artist. So why are so many of us still being excluded from representation? Artist-run centers are exactly what they sound like, centers for art that are run by a group of artists. As we've already seen, public and private galleries aren't the easiest places to get your work shown, and that can get frustrating for an artist. In response to the art world's limited opportunities, contemporary artists in Canada began to establish artist-run centers, also known as ARCs, to show their art in the 1960s. ARCs have helped to sustain the artistic practices of experimental performance, installation, and conceptual art, in addition to helping artists network with other artists both nationally and internationally. They have also created a platform to help the careers of many BIPOC artists who were and still are frequently excluded and underrepresented by public and private galleries. For example, some ARCs, like the Indigenous Curatorial Collective and Gendai Gallery, first emerged to serve communities of Indigenous and Japanese Canadian artists, respectively. Unlike commercial galleries, most centers are nonprofits and do not charge admission fees to visitors. They are primarily non commercial and less interested with selling artworks. Centers focus on sharing work, fostering community, and supporting artists by paying them for their contributions to exhibitions, presentations, and performances. Despite the opportunities of ARCs, they also have their challenges. Running an artist-run center is hard work without the staff and resources more commonly found in public and commercial galleries. In the 1990s, there were over 100 ARCs in Canada, and today there are only about 60 still in operation. While artists have more control over their work and how it's displayed in an ARC, a public gallery's scale of impact and a commercial gallery's monetary gains mean that each institution serves their own purpose in the ecosystem of the art world. Artists from all backgrounds, cultures, and experiences should be represented in each of these institutions because art should literally be for everyone. It may not be that way now, but by learning about structural inequalities and working towards more equitable representation, we're making the necessary changes to make that possible.